The topic for today is uh, a calculator topic. So hopefully you have your calculators. I am going to demonstrate some stuff using our emulated calculator. And what I'm particularly going to talk about today is a local exedrema. And I'm just going to briefly define this topic. Then I'm going to talk about finding them on your calculator. So this is a graphical topic. Let's say you have a function and you have graphed it. Maybe for example, your function looks like that. Well, you'll notice that this function has a maximum. There is some value around there where the function achieves a maximum value. And that's an example of what we call an exedrema. Or you might look at a graph that looks like that. And you observe that this curve has a minimum, and that is also what we call an exedrema. Any maximum and any minimum values are exedrema. And we would like to find the extrema of on our calculator is basically what we're doing today. I should say a word though about this word maximum. I mean about this word vocal. Let's say we have a curve that looks like this sort of, it goes up, it comes down, it hits the axis, and then it goes back up. So in contrast to the previous frame, that dot is no longer really a maximum, is it? I mean, if you get above it, here, for example, is a value that is higher than this value there. But that, that dot still looks like a maximum in the following way. If you covered up enough, or let's say alternatively, if you are raced enough of the graph, that point 
would be a com a maximum. So that point isn't a maximum, but if you cover, let's see if I press a race, it's just gonna erase this entire curve. So I'm just going to inartistically scribble things out. If you cover up this part of the curve, now this point is a maximum. And that is what we call a local maximum or a local extrema. So putting it a little more informally, a local maximum or a local minimum is a point that looks like a maximum or a minimum. This point here looks like a minimum. And even if maybe way out here, I bring the curve down so it's no longer actually a minimum, it still looks like one. If I cover up, this part of the curve, it would be a minimum. And those are the kinds of things that we're going to learn to find on our calculator. And let's give kind of a classic example of a function that has a local extremum. Not all functions have these, by the way, but a classic example of one that does is the drug concentration function. A patient in a hospital receives medicine. We look at the concentration of the drug in the patient's bloodstream. These functions vary drug by drug, patient by patient. But a realistic function would look something like this, maybe 0.32x divided by 4x squared plus 9. And again, these details, the 0 0.32, the 4, and the 9 would vary from drug to drug, from patient to patient, but something like that. If we look at the graph of this drug concentration, let's do this on our count. Activator. Um, have to no, now what? Gonna have to move stuff around so we can see everything. Let's see. Here we more or less go. Share the Sharing the screen makes the whiteboard go away. Thank you, Zoom, that's very helpful. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to just enter this into my calculator. If you're looking at our video after the fact, you are not going to see me entering this thing, but that's what I'm doing now. And I'm entering it into y 
always as if I were going to graph the thing, because I am going to graph the thing. Uh, remember that if we have addition in the top or in the bottom, we want to use parentheses. So in the parentheses, point 32x, and then in parentheses, 4x squared plus 9. And now, let's make that whiteboard go away for a while, and we'll just look at our emulation software. Let's take a look at this graph. It, uh, it doesn't look like much at the moment. Our window is super zoomed out though. X, I mean, Y is going from negative 20,000 to positive 20,000. Let's go from negative 10 to positive 10. Still doesn't look like much. Um, this curve seems to be stuck between negative one and positive one. So let's zoom in even more. I say zoom, I very rarely use the zoom button. I go to the window and I manually adjust stuff. And now finally we're seeing something that isn't just a horizontal line, but it's still just kind of a blur. Let's zoom in even more. If this is zero and this is one, then this is one half, one fourth might be around here. That's that Y go from negative 0.25 to positive 0.25. And finally, we're seeing something we can make sense of. X has to be positive. X is the time since the drug is administered. It doesn't make sense to talk about that being negative. Our X minimum can be zero. And here's the curve. And this curve, if we give it some thought, should make sense. At the moment that the drug is administered, there isn't any drug in the bloodstream. As time passes, the drug suffuses through your body. It passes through the cell wall and the concentration increases. Then eventually, I mean, you get medicated, the medicine doesn't just stay in your body forever, so eventually the drug concentration starts to decrease. And you see that somewhere this curve has a maximum value. I mean, it's it's going up, it hits some maximum, then it starts going down. And our goal for the day is going to be to learn to find these maximum and minimum values on our calculus.
activator. Step one, we've already done. This is a graphical method. So step one is to graph the thing and then mess around with your viewing window if that's necessary so that you can see the maximum. And we can see the maximum. I mean, we don't know exactly where it is, but it's somewhere around here. After that, it's just a matter of finding the right sub menus. We are going to go to the count sub menu, which you might be able to read this from the back of the room, but calc is in blue above the trace button. So it's up here in the upper right. And our calculator is color coded so to access the blue calc button, you press the second button, the blue second button, and then trace. And you see calculate a variety of things. Um, you can calculate roots or zeros, you can find where curves intersect. You can do some calculus. But what we're looking for now is minimum or maximum. And you just pick whichever one is appropriate. In this case, you see we're looking for a maximum. So we select maximum. And your calculator will take us to the graph. And your calculator has not found the maximum for us. Your calculator is asking for more inputs. Here's what your calculator is asking for. A curve could have multiple extrema. So what your calculator is asking for, let's go up here, is some indication of where the extrema you are looking for is. It's asking for a value to the left of the maximum you are looking for. And then it will ask for a value to the right of the maximum we're looking for. And we scroll around with these arrow keys. Slowly scroll around, but we, we get the cursor so that it's to the left of this maximum. We press enter. And now, just like I promised, your calculator is asking for a value to the right of this maximum. We scroll around using the arrow keys. Once we're to the right of the maximum, we press enter. If you have a TI-83 or maybe even a baseline TI-84, you might not be seeing these nice dotted lines. You might just be seeing these symbols up here. 
and somehow your calculator is still not satisfied. Your calculator is asking for what it calls a guess. And theoretic, so you scroll around, theoretically, the closer you can get to the actual maximum, the better. The faster your calculator is going to go. In practice, this guess, guess does not matter at all. We just need to select a value between our bounds. Like, let's use this value as our guess. We press enter. And finally, you see that the cursor has snapped into place and it's found the maximum value, which is 0 0.026 repeating. And it's found where the maximum value occurs, which is 1.5, if we are rounding our answer at all. And that's what we want to be able to do. Um, if you're using like Desmos instead of a calculator, it becomes really quick. But ideally, you should not be using Desmos on exams, for example. I've asked you to hunt down a calculator to use on exams, which means that even if it's a little slower, you should get some practice using these minimum and maximum functions. Any questions? Then 